Yeah, giving people a home is is the first place to start, but in order to transform their lives, um, they need a community where they can flourish. So when there's a deep lack of affordable rents, then the, the concept 20 years ago was to build as many units as possible in the most efficient way as possible. But we've learned since then that that is not the best for people to be able to flourish because people really need community. They need people walking alongside of them. We go into communities and they have certain a certain idea of what social housing or affordable housing looks like. That's, that's an idea that comes from somewhere. It's based in reality. Um, and we're trying to just change people's imaginations. When we are designing a building, we're looking at the next 40, 50 years. Um, what will this building look like in 40 years? Design, beauty, aesthetics, those are all really critical in our approach. And we hope that the building continues to contribute to the broader community in a way that adds value, to both socially and then aesthetically. So it's been exciting to be able to not only learn and, and start thinking about Passive House, but actually start implementing it and learning and relearning from our own experience and actually trying to share that experience with other people. So thanks for being a part of that learning curve with us. There's two main reasons why we decided to switch the way we were building to the Passive House standard. Uh, we were previously always building high quality, energy efficient buildings and we were pretty happy with the way our buildings were performing, but we knew we needed to do more especially when Canada signs on to the Paris Accord, when we as a country make a commitment that we're gonna lower our greenhouse gas emissions by 30% by 2030. So what is our responsibility as an affordable housing builder to helping our country meet its goals? At the same time, we're building for the long term. So in all of our projects, we face tremendous cost constraints. Um, our finances are limited. Um, our ability to charge higher rent is limited because our whole goal is to keep it affordable for people over the long term and while we can control a lot of that in our upfront capital costs, we don't know what will happen in 40 years related to our operational costs. How do we ensure that there's financial sustainability in our buildings for that long term um, when there's lots of variables that are up in the air? It's really a construction approach. So as more people are familiar, more trades, more GCs are familiar with this construction approach, I think it will be the same as building um, a standard multi-residential building. Aside from um, uncertainty for developers, there's no real cost reasons why everybody shouldn't be building this way. Yeah, there, there is momentum. Um, we see our funders are starting to prioritize energy efficiency, and we've been telling our story to many people, um, many different groups, and we are seeing sort of the industry um, build off each other and, and give each other confidence. So, and across Ontario, there's more and more of these passive house projects in the affordable housing industry um, happening, which is which is fantastic. And we hope that we can all do better. Um, we hope that we all can build to a higher standard and provide housing for more people. I think it's exciting to be at the forefront of a collective movement and to also bring lots of other people on board that might be unexpected players into that movement, including our tenants, and to help empower them to say, you are helping us um, change the way we build, which is changing, changing the world.